All right, here's what we're painting on this video, some white mums. We're going to learn how to make some glass look, clear glass look, and um, layer whites and be able to see every single layer in there. This was lots of fun, so I can't wait to paint it with you. Let's get started. start this surface. I've got a 9 by 12 canvas here. I have applied one coat of just white paint on here with a dampened artist sponge. Um, it's already gessoed but I just like to uh, put a, a coat of white paint on there just to fill in any gaps that might have been left in the canvas. And so on my palette I've got um, white and black, matte black, snow white, and I've got a one inch like chip brush. This is actually called a gesso artist brush that I got at Hobby Lobby. Who knows when I got it. At the time that I bought it, it was $2.99. I don't know. I know they do sell, still sell this brush. I have no idea what the price of it is. But you can also go to um, Lowe's and get little uh, chip brushes, um, which is I, when I'm doing a bigger canvas, I use a bigger. I call them chip brushes. I don't know what the technical term is. But I'm going to pick up some white. And we just want to make a rough kind of textured background and I'm going to lay some white in here and then just tip into my black and I'm going to come in here I'm going to wipe some of that off and I'm going to just start blending and creating a mottled background and I probably will layer this a couple of times I'm continually picking up white I don't want that black to take over, and it can take over pretty quickly. Leaving some bristles, and these brushes always do, so just scoop them out of there. This is going to be a rough looking, I mean, it's not going to be a smooth background. It's going to have a lot of brush strokes in it and be really textured. A little black. Make sure you cover the whole canvas. Some of these brushes lose a lot more hair than other brushes. Oh goodness gracious. Okay, I think I, I, think I got it off my brush that time. And you just want to keep working wet into wet here. If you see any place of your canvas that is still showing through, just quickly brush back over that. And to help keep your paint wet, but you just barely want to do this, you can spritz it with some water. But if you do too much water, it's just going to start lifting the paint. So you have to be very careful when you do that. All right, I'm going to lay in some more white, tip into a tiny little bit of black. I want the background to be white and gray. I don't want it to be black. So this is going to be a companion piece for some other paintings that I did in my living room. So I'm doing the background similar to what I did on those. Those uh, canvases were very large canvases. This one is pretty small in comparison. Now you want to let it dry and then take a look at it and see if you want to apply a second layer. I did two layers on my ones downstairs but they were very large canvases and I wanted to make sure that you know the background looked really good for what I was going for so I'm gonna let it dry and then I'll decide if I want to come back and apply uh, a second coat on here or not. Smoothing out some of the where I got the paint just a little bit too thick. 
I see some places that didn't get covered. So this is still wet down here. I can kind of play around with it. Okay, I'm going to let mine dry and see if there's any place I want to add more paint to. I'm going around seeing if there's any places that aren't covered well. And I think it looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to worry too much more about it, so I'm going to let it dry so I can get my um, pattern transferred on here. All right, my background is dry here. I'm gonna lightly sand it and I am going to apply a second coat. So, I'm gonna pick up my white and again, lay my white in here. I'm trying to do little X's. Tiny little bit of black. This brush is losing a lot of bristles, more than normal. I'm trying to maintain an X movement as I go down this canvas because it will just help it a whole lot more. If you get hairs in it and you're, you're, it's dry, you can just very lightly sand those hairs out. I'm going to dampen down here where I haven't painted yet. I'm picking up white and tipping into the black pretty much every time I go over there. movement. Just little X's, then very lightly tickle the brush across there. As long as your paint is wet, you can gently blend and soften. work pretty good for me so I'm gonna leave it right there and let it dry I kind of figured I'd need a second coat on here but you know I just thought I would test the waters first because we just never know you can put as many layers on here as you want till you get a background that you really really like so I think that one's gonna work out well for me so I'm gonna let it get dry now Okay, my background's dry. I have very lightly transferred on my lines, um, especially on your uh, base down here. 
So we're going to start by blocking in the color for our leaves. We are using premium DecoArt Premium Tube Acrylics today and this color is sap green. So I'm just using a filbert brush and I'm just going to block in where my leaf will be. paint them all in and I'll probably take a couple of coats here these uh, tube acrylics are just wonderful creamy delicious paints I'm going to kind of take that down in where my flowers are so when I paint my flowers it'll be tucked back in behind the flowers really well so just go ahead and bring your leaf down into your flower area a little bit Um, this leaf I might wait until later because it is on top of a couple of flowers there. blocking in. So I'm going to go finish these off camera so we don't use a lot of camera time for just putting some base coats in here. I'm even going to I'm going to go ahead and do the ones on the vase. There's two of them here that lay over the vase. All right, so I'm going to finish these up. I'm going to put a second coat on there just so I get the texture of the canvas covered really well. Alright, I'll be back. Okay, I want to deepen up just where the base of the um, petal, the leaf is. So I am going to mix a tiny little bit of my black, which is carbon black. Just brush mix a little bit into your brush and just kind of scrub some of it at the base. You can kind of create a vein in there if you would like to. I uh, take my green, I load my brush with the green that we base coated with and then just barely tip into some black just to get it a little bit darker. Tip in there. Kind of just scrub it in. some of this next to this flower here because it's going to be kind of behind that one and then kind of create a, a vein in it. I'm still just using the six filbert. Just kind of scrub it in there. This one has a turned place on it, so I'm going to take a little bit of that paint and darken right back here. And then I added this leaf in here. And it also has a turned edge here. So we'll kind of create that in there by just putting some of this dark color right there and a little bit out on the outer edge there. 
So right where we created the turn will be dark. And then on the very back edge of it. Okay. I think we're pretty good here. All right, now we want to lighten up. Let me white angle you back out a little bit. We're going to add our light colors on here. So we're going to use um, yellow green light. And I'm just going to load my brush up and I'm just going to lay my brush at the edge and pull, pull. Get some of the water out of my brush. Pull, pull, pull. Pull. We're going to pull towards the center vein. If you feel like you cover up too much of your dark color or your other color, it's very easy to go back in and put it back in. So just on the tip and, and just pull your brush. This one's turned, so we're going to start out here on the tip, pull and follow the outer edge here, all the way back, a little bit more paint, same way, one, down one side, pulling and down the other. This is kind of a transparent paint so we can see the, uh, the green underneath. You just kind of want to flick your brush and let the paint kind of just skim off of it. Right, so this one, our vein goes here so we're going to pull some from here because it's kind of turned. A bit darker on the edge here. I'll put a little bit on the tip out here. And then we'll start on this side pulling. start up here on this side, pull towards the center, and then on this little turned edge we're just going to kind of touch, make sure you got some paint on your brush, and kind of flick it down, and then we're going to have just a little bit in there. Not too much. Now if you want to brighten up, you can just tip into some primary yellow and then go back on just a few places and add some of this color in there. I think that looks pretty good for our leaves.
And that will finish out our leaves. We're not going to do anything else to them. They're done. We're going to get ready to move on to the flowers. All right, I want to add my lines for my stems in here because I want to get them painted in. So you can transfer the lines from the pattern or you can just find the center of your flower here and then bring your hand straight down and when you get to the water then you can just draw the stem in. So our center will probably be here. Okay, this one's got a center over here. This one's way up here. This one's here. Just bring your hand straight down. We've got one here. We've got one here. This one might be a little bit angled. We've got one up here. And we've got one here. So we can kind of see where our lines are going to be going for our stems. Erase these dots out of the center here. So we're going to, let me wide angle it out so you can see the bottom of it. We're going to add our stems in here. Now when we do this, we kind of want to blur them just a little bit. Um, we're going to go with that uh, same, well, yeah. Let me put some of that out here, that sap green. I think I might want to mix it. So let me see if I can mix a good color here. I don't want it to be as dark as what our leaves were. So I'm going to take the sap green and the uh, yellow light green, which was our first highlight color, and mix a color right there. I'm going to make my stems just a little bit lighter than what we made our leaves. And I think I'm going to get a different brush. Let me get a round brush here. Okay, so you're just going to mix a, a lighter shade of that green. Don't stress out about the color mixture, the quantities, because all I did was dip over here dip over here and mix them together. If I felt it needed to be darker, I'll just get a little bit more of that. If I feel it needs to be lighter, just a little bit more of that. And just make a nice uh, color that you like. And then we're just going to, if I can find my lines, I'm going to very lightly go down that line. And because they're going to be in the water, I'm going to make this one just a tad bit fatter. We're just going to very lightly kind of blur it. So I think I'll take a damp brush and, oops, that removed it, so. We just want to blur the edges just a little bit. try another one. If I can't get this to work with this kind of paint, then I'm going to just forget it. We don't really need it blurred up here at the top because this is not in water. So you only really need to blur it out where it, when it hits the water. So I'm going to get that green removed off of there. Damp brush, clean water. We don't want the green blurred up here. We want to keep it pretty much a nice solid color. All right. Let's do another one here. I've got one here. Use your whole arm. Follow down that
just give it a little bit of a blurring. Let me zoom you in so maybe you can kind of see that a little bit better. It just barely blurred it where it's in the water. right there we don't need it blurred because that's above the water I'm trying to see where I drew all my other lines at we should have eight stems in here right through that. Alright, we've got one over here. To mix me up some more paint here real quick. Here, so it's probably behind this leaf a little bit. See where my other other ones are. Looks like there's one must be coming from that one right there. We might see a little bit of peeking there. See what we've got left here. We've got one here. And then it looks like I've got Cover that one up a little bit more. I've got another one right beside it. I'm going to make this one just a little bit darker. Pick up a little bit more of that sap green, mix it in my brush, and we'll put this one right here. go back with my sap green and just skim some up here in the part that's not in the water. And then down here I'm going to put just a little bit kind of where some of these are. Actually, that one's behind. Make it look a little more layered in here. All right, adding just some some of this color, you know, where one is on top of another. Not a lot. We just need to kind of um, bring them out a little bit. Add a little bit more paint on this one. It's a little bit light. I'm going to go in and erase any pencil lines that I haven't covered up here. 
right angle out so you can kind of see it a little bit better. So when we blur it a little bit, it gives the, the illusion that it's in water uh, instead of just keeping it a nice smooth stem. I'm going to darken a little bit up here. I think we're pretty good here. A little bit dark on this one, maybe down at the bottom. I think I'll put a little bit of dark on all the bottoms of them. So that's just straight sap green here. This paint you want to clean up pretty quickly because it will set in there a little bit faster than the other acrylic paints will. Okay, I think that looks pretty good for our stems. Now, for sure, we're going to work on the flowers. Okay, we're going to get ready to paint in our flowers, and we're going to paint them in with DecoArt Traditions uh, acrylic paint, uh, titanium white. I like this paint because it is a much more pigmented paint, and it's a very smooth, creamy paint, and I really like it. So instead of using the premium, which you can use the premium if you have that, um, I'm going to use um, this particular one. So I'm going to load a 6 Filbert. Um, with this paint. And I'm ha I've got a four filbert handy in case I feel like my petals are getting too big or out of control here. I want to make sure I've got all the moisture out of my brush so I'm going to go lay it on my paper towel make sure it's all out of there. And then load up with some paint. Okay, we're loaded. We're going to be on the chisel edge of the brush, so I'm going to have it turned like this. I'm not going to have it flat. I'm going to have it turned like this. And we're going to begin stroking in um, our petals. We're going to paint them in white, and then we're going to come back and um, add some color on top of here. But we want to get the form of them first. So this one, the center is going to be probably right about there. And the flowers that I have that I'm taking reference from the center is really tucked down in there so I'm not going to um, make the center super big on these so we want to start lay the brush down and pull it it's almost like you're making a daisy but we're not making a daisy now to get these more curved ones you just turn the brush a little bit as you're stroking And we're just going to work all the way in to the center. And we're going to put more than one layer on here. I'm going to come out and go over this leaf a little bit. Okay, so there is our first layer on that flower. So this one has the, the center here. I'm, I think I might make this one turned a little bit. So I'm going to pull all the way in. Well, maybe I won't make it turn because I made it such a big flower so let me move the center back here a little bit so just stroke in your first row there I know that one looks pretty sloppy but once we add in our next row and stuff it will not be <laughs> okay now this one we're just seeing a part of this daisy so we're going to come out here And if you need to practice this stroke, I'm not pushing hard on the on the brush unless I want a really fat petal. 
I'm not pushing very hard. And I'm just going to put a little bit down here because that's kind of tucked in behind that flower. So we'll paint that one on next. And its center is right here. And we'll start out here. This one I might be able to make turned a little bit. So um, well, let me go ahead and put some petals down in here. When we add our second row, we'll kind of change that up a little bit. Alright, we've got one tucked down in here, which I probably should have painted it first. You want to paint your ones that are tucked in first. And we're going to come back and put some washer green down in there so we can kind of blend that in. Alright, we've got one here. It's behind that one, but it's on top of this one. through here. And then this one here. Get the center there. Let's see. I'm going to put this one forward and this one behind, so I'm going to paint this one in first. way. I think that's what I should do with that one. And then this one here, I'll put this way. Bring it into that center. up a little bit there and make this one a little bit bigger. Alright, so that's pretty much our first layer of petals in here. And I promise we're not making daisies. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of green back in there right now. I'm going to take that um, sap green and mix a little bit of black with it. And get a little bit of water. Kind of create a little wash of it. And see how this looks. I'm just going to kind of tap it in back in here. Maybe just a little bit darker. Try and stay off my petals there. I can restroke them, but you kind of want to do this stuff first. Anywhere, anywhere where you can still kind of see behind, you know, the flowers. Just tap a little bit of green in there. Give it the look that, you know. It's kind of filled in more. 
So we probably should do that before we start painting the flowers. So I'll be sure and put that in on my instructions. So now we want to create a second layer in here. All right, so let's add a second layer on here. And as I am painting this, I am loving, loving, loving the white flowers. So I may not change the color of them. We will tap some centers in here. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and tap a little center in there. I'm going to go back to my round brush. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of the sap green and a little bit of the um, yellow green light. And just kind of mix those two on my brush. Make it a little bit more on the dark side than the light side. And I'm going to tap some of this in the center here. Our next layer we're going to definitely bring up to the center. And I'm just very loosely tapping this in here. Okay, so that kind of tells us where all of our flowers are. All right, back to our chisel brush. And I think I might go to a four this time, or a filbert brush, not a chisel brush. I'm gonna move to a four this time. And again, I'm going to load the white on here. And we're going to create a second layer of petals coming right to that center. Still following your shape that you created. And you can see both layers. You should be able to see both layers. I'm going to have this one be a, a tucked in flower, so I'm going to pull some up in front here. You're just making them shorter than your previous layer. You're still coming right to that center. keep this one open. I think that one I might make tucked in there a little bit. All right, I'm going to go out here and do this one. Oh, I got white paint on my arm so let me clean that off so I don't transfer it somewhere. I meant to spray my arm and I sprayed myself in the face. I'm awake now. All right. No worries. I got this. Try and not lay my arm in the paint over there. And then this one can be a little turned here. Alright, so this one I'm going to let's see which way do I want to turn it. Add my petals in here. here and then here I might bring some up kind of I don't want that thick thick paint in there try if you're if you're laying down too thick of a paint then just wipe your brush off and load it so it's got nice smooth paint here all right I think this one I'm gonna bring these petals up on that one a little bit and now I'll create my second layer in here. And maybe bring a layer up this way. And then our one out here. These bigger ones will probably come back and add a third layer on here.
going to darken up some of these petals in the background back here just a little bit. And then we've got this last one here. Those are so pretty. I am loving them. Okay, so for this one and this one and this one, I'm going to add a third layer onto those. So I'm washing my brush out so I can get nice, freshly loaded brush. Okay, let's get my white paint out, which is what I was starting to do. Oh, and these three I'm gonna stroke in the third row here you're making each row shorter and of course they'll be a little bit smaller Ooh, that's a lot of paint there I don't want thick thick paint on there so This one needs a third row on it because it's pretty big. Oh my goodness gracious, I'm really picking up the tonnage of paint here. I'm going to give this one a little bit of a third row. And I think this one, it's a pretty big flower. But all the rest of them look okay. So we're just doing smaller, whoo, maybe not. Did I not go down my small, yeah, this is my smaller, smaller brush, but I am just like going crazy here. Smaller strokes. Okay, so you should be able to see the dimension in those petals, and these petals out here, I am just going to very, very lightly stroke over them because I did not leave a whole lot of paint out here, and they look a little sparse, and maybe right here. And I think that's pretty good. I'm going to tap my centers back in now. Um, the green. That's our sap green. You can add a little bit of the yellow light into it and just tap them back in there. That one we didn't really need to tap back in. And this one I'm going to make just a tiny bit bigger. Alright, now we're going to grab a flat brush. And I'm just going to grab an 8 flat. And we're going to float a little bit of green, of our sap green, around our centers. So I'm going to put some fresh out here. Alright, so we're just going to side load. So my brush is damp. I'm going to tip into my sap green here and just work a little bit on the edge of this brush. And then we're just going to put a little bit of this right next to our center. And make those 
those centers look a little bit more like they're connected to the flower. This is very, very little paint. And then this one's turned up, so I'm just going to do that side. And this will help also push those centers down into the flower a little bit. This one's turned as well, so I'm just going to do this side. Come back and tap some of our um, yellow that we used in our leaves for our bright highlight onto oh, that one. That one wasn't dry. I was picking up the white paint. Go over here and do this one here a little bit, and see if I can finish this without lifting all that white paint off of there. All right, I think I got them all. I look really good. Um, so let's take our round brush and tap a little bit of yellow onto our centers. Just for a bright little highlight on there. This is a pretty transparent little paint, so it won't. Uh, I won't do a whole lot, just a little bit, which is all we need. Just a little bit of a highlight. Or a big highlight. That one's a little bit too big. Let me remove that and try that again. I just want some little dots in there. I don't want to it to take over the whole center. So just a couple of little dots in there. I'm going to wide angle out so you can see it. We've just got our base to fill in here, and those are so pretty. I really love them. They look gorgeous. Okay, uh, let's get ready to do our base now. Okay, we're going to start creating some shadows and reflections in our glass here. So um, I'm using just the regular bottle acrylic this time along with my Traditions White. Um, I'm going to mix some white and some black together and get a uh, kind of dark. I'm going to grab a bigger brush here. I'm actually going to use an angle brush here. I'm going to load that brush. I just made a dark value gray here. And. Um, might lighten it just a little bit, add a little bit more white to it and lighten it to a medium value gray. And we're going to create some shadows out here. And I want them to kind of fade away. And so we want the, the edges to be really blurred. We don't want um, a lot of hard lines here. So a mop brush is pretty important. Water in your brush is very important. And we're going to create some shadow out here. Let's blur it. This is that, uh, it's more of a, a dark value gray there. Um, we'll put some of this inside our vase here. I've just kind of drawn some sections out in here with my pencil where I kind of want to go to. I'll darken this back in here. Um, let's put some of this down here. Gonna mix it a little bit more. Lots and lots of water in your brush. And we'll put this down here. Keep your line for your vase 
very nice. And we'll just bring this down here. Go along our water line here. I don't want to cover up my um, my stems. So I'm going to put a little bit of this back here. Like I said, we're blurring out, so you have to have the water in there. And create our edge to our water here. So we'll be up a little bit more on the toe of the brush and create that little bit of water look there. Take the water edge, blur it out. I'm going to keep a damp brush handy so I can remove it off of my stems. This is the back water, back of the water back there. I'm going to spritz my palette with some water so I can have some water handy. Pick up on my brush. Do a little bit along this edge, right through here. Just starting to create some shadowy, reflected areas. I want to make sure I keep my water correct. <laughs> Blur it out with the water edge. Okay, we can go across our stems in the front here, or down here on this lower edge of the water, because they are actually in the water, and we want them to look in the water. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit more, let's see if I can move my palette over here, a little bit more water on my brush. I'm going to get a little bit more of that black, and darken this gray a little bit more, maybe not quite that much, so wipe that off and grab some white, and we're going to make some darker shadows out through here. And bring them down to that other and just kind of blend them out. If you get onto your white, you can come back in and stroke those back in there. But we want it a little bit darker right there and right here underneath this leaf. I'll make it a little bit darker. water. Blur that all out. Especially up there. Use your fingers if you need to. I'll put just a little bit of this down here. We're going to create our highlights here in a second. So this is more just our shadowing. Alright, I'm going to bring this over to the vase just a little bit and go underneath. Pick up a little bit more of the black in there and go underneath. And just kind of... Paint has to be dry, so don't... Um, if your paint is not dry, you're going to lift paint. So, we want our paint to be dry. Okay, so I think that that's created some nice little shadows in here. I kind of blur this out just a little bit. Taking a damp brush and just dampening that paint. The paint's not cured, so I can take my finger and just 
blur that out. Do not ever be afraid to get in there and use your fingers to paint. Some of the best tools we have is our fingers. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I need to put a little bit more of this. Tuck it in here. So I might, when I teach this class, we'll do the shadows first. That way we can put our strokes on top. not worry about trying to tuck in around them. I'm going to put a little bit beside some of these stems. here. I need to go around this leaf a little bit. I'm going to pick up just black, I think. I need this leaf to look like it's on top. So we're going to give it a little bit of a shadow right there. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. Alright, that's just with our gray values. We did a medium and a dark value gray. And just go around everything. I've got just a tiny little bit of paint on my brush, so you can go a long ways with it if you've got a little bit of water in your brush. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do with the shadows for now. I might come back and darken some of them here in a little bit. We want to start adding our highlights on here. I'm going to use the same brush, and I'm, I'm using, what size am I using? I'm using a 5 8 inch angle brush. Okay, we're going to start some highlights in here. We're going to use white. And we want to create a little bit of a highlight on our waterline. I might go down to a smaller brush here in a minute. I'm just up on the very edge of the brush, just creating a little bit of a highlight along that waterline. Put some down here. Put some highlight on this edge. A little bit along the bottom. Teeny tiny amounts of paint on your brush. We can come back and darken and brighten and do all that stuff, but we want to start out with just a little bit. A highlight over here, kind of a reflective highlight. And maybe just a touch down here. Put a little bit along this edge. A 
I'm definitely going to brighten this one. So we're going to work that into the glass. A little bit brighter through here. It's not straight. I want a little bit more right here. Because I have a lot of water in my brush, this is fading down in there. So I can immediately see where I need to add some brighter stuff in there. I'm going to take my white and black mix. That dark gray I need to define this edge of the the vase just a little bit up on the very tippy toe of my brush. I'll just use the chisel edge. Oops. Make it a little bit straighter would be better. Your finger blurred out. Tiny bit darker. Keep the bottom edge of my vase as straight as possible. And just a touch darker up here. my water line is straight. <laughs> I don't want our water line going downhill. All right, a little bit more white, and we're going to sit back and take a look at it and see what else we need.
this one here I'm going to move. to my flat brush here because I really need a crisper line right here. So I can get a little bit more paint on my brush this way. using my um, eight flat. That's a reflective highlight there. And this one as well. Alright, I'm going to... Um, I think I might darken up this back edge just a teeny tiny little bit. Let's... Um, See if I've got any on my leaf. I do right there. So I'm going to remove that because the leaf is on top of the glass. So we don't want any of this color on our leaf. Okay, I think that looks pretty good for our highlights there. I might come back and, and Brighten this side. It still needs to be a little bit brighter. I want to add some washes, tints of green on there for some reflection. So I'm going to use my um, 8 flat. Get some of that sap green. Really thin it down with some water. And we're just going to create some reflections of the green in here. And blur it out with your finger. Just in a few places. We don't we don't have to get carried away with that. Just some reflection coming from our greenery that's up in the top. Alright, let me brighten this highlight and then I'm going to um, let it set for a minute take a picture of it and see what I want to do white is really fading down into that gray quite a bit so I'm going to keep brightening it up here. I feel like we need some in the water. Back there. I'm not really liking 
liking this. Right here. So I'm just going to remove it with my white eraser. here I think. I feel like I lost the shape of my vase over here. Alrighty, I am going to let this set for a minute and take a picture of it and see where I feel like I need anything else. I think it's looking pretty good though. Okay, let me zoom in just a little bit. I finished this. I, I let it set and uh, all I did was come back and just brighten a little bit through here and a little bit along this edge. Um, you can also add some little washes of the sap green in the background if you uh, want to do that. But uh, otherwise, I think this um, is a done canvas. It's ready to be signed, varnished, and framed. So I hope that you all enjoyed this design. It was a fun one for me. I really enjoyed it. Um, give me a thumbs up if you're watching on my YouTube channel. And you guys, I can't wait to see what you do with this one. It was so much fun. It's a very quick project, and you're going to love these uh, premium acrylic paints. They are uh, just a lot of fun to paint with. So I hope to see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much for painting with me. Bye-bye, everybody.